Hi, your Etsy print-on-demand AI listings are not selling and never will, and what to do instead? For the past few years, every get-rich-quick guru on YouTube, TikTok, courses, everywhere has advised print-on-demand with juicy screenshots showing their vast amounts of money. But the barrier to entry always was skill, specifically design or art skills, Almost all of these successful shops were created by people with real skills in design and design at scale. These people could churn out multiple products every single day. So the secret to success with a print on demand Etsy shop is design skill, which most of us do not have. But this changed last year with the explosion in AI. And now anyone who can type a few words can create beautiful images that can easily either be sold as digital files or using a print on demand comp or using a print on demand company to sell on a variety of products the internet is full of gurus teaching you how to make massive sales with these products and it looks like lots of people are looking for this advice check out these views but when you try and follow, you're not getting $15,000 per month with just 30 days work. Why is this? Let's dig into a couple of these videos and really see what's going on. So this, this piece of art is made by AI is Mark on business. YouTube has shown me a couple of his videos because they seem to be really popular and I can actually see why. I want to say right off the bat, I'm not having a go at this guy. He's making stunning videos with great editing and storytelling, the perfect subject and pacing for a video to go viral. But sadly, also the perfect storytelling and pacing to have you watching and inspired to create these great type of products without ever actually realizing the advice is wrong. What's, what's going wrong with the advice? So have a check in his video. He gives us a quick peek at his new shop. So this video is a little older. So let's go and check out his shop and see what results he actually had sort of during and after the video. So his shop is Magic Designs Prints and he's had a total of 12 sales. And let's check out these listings on E-Rank. Okay, famous artists. Bet you that's without permission. So could be issues if you do like he did. So yeah, if you pause the video and find his shop and then think to copy him, because the intro to his video says he'll show all the analytics and everything. So if you think to copy him and make these kind of things, you might get in trouble with copyrighted, you know, trade people trademark their own likeness. Um, or the what's the word I'm looking for? the estate of some of these big names if the the creator if the artists have passed away so he's setting the expectation that this th what he's shown here is really something to be followed the the point of the video when you're watching it it's inspiring you want to watch this to find out what he did he says he follows up with the hardships so you've got to make sure to watch but most people are already invested in this method that it is something that they should be following. Let's dig into it. So he's using Mid Journey to create the artwork. This is an AI tool and paying the subscription, he says, means he has the right to sell the creations or so they say on the policies on the bit where you're paying for it. So firstly here though, the law around AI works is evolving quickly, but currently at the moment, AI created artwork is not considered able to be copyrighted. So this agreement's not giving you the actual copyright of the work you create because it can't. So it's likely that anyone could go to your Etsy shop, copy your images, and even if you were to hit them with a DMCA takedown, they could dispute this. And if you decided to take them to court, it's likely they would win. And also Etsy might see the duplicate content across Etsy and take your listing down. So there's problematic things in using AI art to create low, low effort, high volume work in that if anything blows up, everybody can copy you. Anyway, he goes on to say how this is easy because I don't have to worry about printing, shipping, and I keep a 90% profit. And he's suggesting here that the downside is you can't charge so much because it's digital. Honestly, 
there are way worse downsides than that. Mistakes he says he's made here. Now, when he opened his shop, it was immediately suspended, as many shops are. So he believes his mistake was not making new listings when the shop was suspended, which I guess that could be good use of your time. If you're wanting to start an Etsy shop and you get shut down automatically, as many new shops do, don't just give up. Continue working on whatever you're going to be doing and wait until your shop is reopened because this is very common. Second mistake is overestimating the value of listings. Um, I would call this poor market research, um, but I kind of agree. But so I don't know what tool this is he's using, but he's assuming pop art. His keyword research has gone as far as pop art and he's assuming it'll be a big seller because big shops seem to sell well for pop art. This is a very outdated market research method for Etsy. Yes, the listings have high views. When I go onto E-Rank, E-Rank looks at the top 100 listings. But that doesn't mean that people are looking for the exact term pop art or that they're looking for it right now. It might have been popular months ago. When you look at how many people are actually searching for the actual keyword pop art, this is only an average of 4,000 searches a month. And in early spring, when he was actually running this experiment, it's only 2,000 people searching for pop art. And to that, if we believe the high number of sales, that means the listings that are showing up in search for pop art are likely high sellers. They're probably selling in other ways, in other places. But these listings will have great marketplace score for their shop. So a new shop would find it almost impossible to be seen in search for that term. To do good market research, here you would look and say, yes, this is a style that has potential to be profitable. Now, what types of pop art are people actually looking for? You don't just stop with that overall style. So, for example, if I look deeper into pop art, we see graffiti wall art or queer are both promising looking tags that people ranking for pop art are also using. Those could be styles worth niching down into. And if it works and sales come in, then eventually listings might get seen for pop art. Oh, and look here. This isn't his first shop. He tells us, I run another Etsy shop selling websites and Canva templates. So he has experience in a running a successful shop, right? He knows how to sell high volume, right? Here's his other shop. 21 sales. He got his first sale in the first couple of days with that store, so he thought he could repeat the same in a new shop. So he decided to do some more research and added more styles. But the styles he chose are still high level styles like abstract art. Now Etsy tells us that they're looking at how past similar listings sold. So basically your shop can build up some type of authority if you're in a specific niche. This spaghetti at the wall approach of just trying all sorts of things I guess it's okay to see what works at first, but most of the best selling shops have a defined niche. He got one sale. This gave me motivation to keep pumping out new art and listings. Pumping out new listings. So he moved away from AI and purchased shapes to make abstract paintings. Now, it depends how much work he did here. These listings may actually be against Etsy rules as he's not really designed them, nor is he altering that much. You can't really tell in the video how much he's doing, but this would be more like kind of reselling, buy designs, sell designs sell designs for people to print out. But still, after three sales and making a loss, he decides the most important thing is to be able to upscale his ability to create more listings. Now, this is such a common mistake people make. They think you need hundreds of listings to make sales. Now, yes, more listings are like more hooks in the water, so more chances to be seen. But if you've baited your hooks with concrete, then it doesn't matter how many hooks you have in the water. That's not saying his art is bad. Some looks really great. But if you're aiming for a saturated keyword in an unknown shop, then making more things that are just not getting seen will mean basically more items just not getting seen. Or it's basically doing more of the thing that's not working and expecting different results. 
The vast majority of this video is a story explaining the difficulty of creating more listings, the tools used, etc. This is very interesting and I'm sure helpful to other people who want to create a shop full of items that are not selling. I don't know many people will follow these steps. Massive amounts of people have watched the video. And the amazing thing with human nature is not only do we want the quick solution, but we also believe that we can beat the odds and do better. So the video gives an idea of this quick way to build an Etsy shop, even though the Etsy shop doesn't make many sales. So people will watch it and still think this is a good method that they can get sales with, but they'll just do better than the person making this video. And the thing is, actually, his new shop has done better than the majority of new shops on Etsy. It's actually a big success. But people don't want to hear that. You're not going to get a viral video saying you made four sales in the first month. People don't want to hear the truth that it can take months to even make your first sale. Now he makes the next mistake that sellers who are not making enough sales make. He assumes the issue is his prices. So I set up a couple of summer sale discounts to attract buyers. And having a sale will speed things up. And here we see his stats and we can see that some days he's only getting one visit to his shop. So if people are just not seeing the shop, the sale's not going to help. And he's judging the failure of this of any of his methods after just a few days. This shop is not getting enough views to get enough data in a few days to see if anything is helping. You need to wait until you have hundreds or thousands of views before you can actually decide if something is working or not. And in a last attempt to push the shop, I caved and just started running Etsy ads for $1 a day. Etsy ads cost per click is going to be super high for these broad keywords because they're so competitive. So $1 is going to be used up in no time with not enough views to really get any sales. He says that a few orders started coming in, but the screenshot we see four total sales. He had one sale when the shop was selling only pop art, two more sales when, it, when he expanded his niche. So the few orders was one order and we don't even know if that order came from the adverts. His conclusions he asked is selling AI art a fluke a waste of time? Now in my opinion some people will make lots of money from AI art. Those are the people who are able to jump on the trends quickly, have a great eye for design, good social media following and are able to find great keywords. Most people will not do well. They'll follow tutorials for people, from people who've already done it. And by the time the tutorial is out, it's too late. That keyword's already saturated. And if by f some fluke they do get a big seller, then other people are going to steal it. Trying to copy viral success after the other person has had that success is like trying to surf by waiting until someone gets a great wave, watching them surf the wave and then get in the water behind the wave and wonder why you're not getting the same results. Anyway, his conclusions. He thinks he should sell physical art. Honestly, no. Aiming for the same keywords will have you in the same place in search because it looks like his strategy is to get spotted in search because he's not talking about about any kind of marketing. Except if you're carrying an inventory, now that'll mean you're even more out of pocket. Or if you're doing print on demand, nah. It's no real difference. I guess it means you can have more products in your shop, but we already spoke about that concrete bait. He said he would change his shop, but looking at it, it seems he's not, and he's still getting a few sales. Still better than most new shops, but it's not the quick millions that people expect. So he's going to see his experiment as a failure. He says you need to upload regularly, even when there are no sales coming in. That is such a total myth. There's nothing magical in Etsy algorithm that just making new products, listing new products is going to get you seen. You need to offer lots more types of products to attract a larger audience. Again, a myth. This is this is chucking spaghetti at a wall. It would be much more efficient to research the right type of spaghetti before starting to chuck it. But what is this guy doing right? You know, in the gold rush, the people who made the most money. Well, that's the people who got there first to the right place. Clearly, he's too late for that party for this type of low effort product, as 
there are loads of people who's already done it. So he's not going to win from that strategy. And neither are the hundreds and thousands of people who've watched his video. What about the people with the realistic expectations who took the hard but steady minds that produced results year after year? That doesn't make interesting YouTube spectacles. Although he has a couple of shops that are doing better than average, it's not enough. So what about the people selling the shovels? You can sell the things to help the people making this easy art. He even mentions this at the end of his video, that you can sell things like the prompts people use to create the art. This is actually kind of good advice. There's lots of people wanting to make this kind of low value product. So all the points that he spotted that they struggle with, how to make lots of listings, how to upscale them, how to increase the quality, etc sell them those things. But there's a final type of gold rush person that people don't talk about. And these are the people teaching the people to sell the shovels. When you have a large, fast growing community of people who came for advice on how to get rich quick with lazy AI related shop like this, even although his shop's not doing the massive sales that people want, he's found an interesting method to make some kind of a living from this. Make the process sound pretty easy. Of course, difficult enough that not everyone can do it, but you can do it. Offer free guides, which I'm actually surprised he's not making them sign up for a mailing list to get, so you're missing a trick there. But he has free guides for how to do this. Show credibility of the process. Now, in this case, his shops don't have that credibility he's looking for. So in this follow-up video, he's showing other successful shops. Then, Looking at them and assuming his method that didn't work for him is how that successful shop got so successful. So you watch the video and you're feeling that he's showing you the way to make these sales. This makes for very viral videos. This gives you the promise of the get rich quick scheme. They show people who've had success and they show a method. The thing is, in his previous video, he's already proven that the method doesn't work or it's not working for him. But viral YouTube videos that engage viewers, which they will, they're beautiful videos and his teaching style is great. These type of videos do really well on YouTube and people don't even notice it's smoke and mirrors. These kind of videos can make way more money than what his shop's currently doing. People will follow this and stress themselves that they're not making the massive sales, not even noticing that he's not making the massive sales. And I I want to say just now, I don't think he's trying to con or trick anyone. The problem here is the YouTube algorithm and people's behavior. People aren't interested in seeing videos talking about how difficult it is to make sales on Etsy for real normal people. People want the flashy quick fix ones. They also want that kind of storytelling and everything that is almost, it's not quite deceptive, it's not deliberately deceptive, but the way the story is woven, it's motivating and inspiring. So you follow it along, you get sucked into the story and you're spat out the other end feeling inspired without realizing it doesn't work. So because of, because of that, he wants to make he wants to make good videos and he is making good videos. He's making videos that feed the YouTube algorithm. It sounds familiar to the Etsy algorithm and things, but the things that feed the algorithm aren't the things that people need to hear. So I appeal to anyone who can make such lovely content and who can teach so well, please, please look at what you're teaching or even how the method that you're teaching comes across to people, what they're going to come away from the video with. I genuinely wish viral Etsy selling teachers would teach good realistic steps. And I genuinely pe wish people would stop watching and sharing the bad advice. Very, very few people on Etsy start their shop to viral success. And even if they did, by the time they make a video telling you that step by step of how to have the same success, it's too late for you to follow. 
it is very possible to succeed on Etsy. You either have to have the skills to get in there first on something like this, or understand that it might take you a bit longer. And Mark's video does show us his methods didn't work, but it's just packaged in a way that still makes you think that these are the correct methods. And of course, it's not just this person's videos and it's not just on YouTube. This is the case everywhere that there are influencers, gurus. The advice that's shared the most isn't necessarily the best advice because we don't want to hear the best advice. Have you looked at the beauty, the diet, the exercise, TikTokers, Instagram people? Are they given the best advice? Are there not people who are given advice on how to follow their things and then it comes out that they haven't actually been following the steps that they're telling you to get the physiques? The same with growing YouTube, with everything. The videos, the content that gets shared the most is the most inspiring, but it isn't necessarily the way that you should be doing it. Kind of went off into a bit of a rant there, but I hope that makes sense. Anyway, enjoy this kind of content, but don't get sucked into the fancy packaging and believe that's what you need to be doing. Set realistic goals and you can have a real success in your Etsy shop. Just not necessarily an interesting enough success to make viral YouTube videos.